YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. It never gets old. <laughs> the wing sweep is so cool on this F14 and the full functioning televator on this, Televons are just super, super cool. So guys, if you haven't seen this thing yet, this is our second thoughts. We're gonna show you just how much we love it right now. Flies on 2200. 4S and I did get new batteries for this plane because it doesn't have a lot of room. So full disclosure there, the retracts are not retracts, excuse me, the landing gear come out. If you wanna do belly landing, we're gonna do some belly landings today. We're gonna to fly it once more because we have really good conditions today. And I can't wait to share this again. If you wanna help support our channel, buy this thing from the links. It's a fast plane. It's experienced as per described on the box. But I think that it's not a hard to fly plane. It's just more kind of tricky to land. So if you guys are in the market for an F-14, which who isn't, then this might be the one for you. Twin 40 millimeter EDFs. All right, throw cuts off. Here we go. This thing is small. One of the worst things about it is hard to see. So you want to make sure you pick a day with blue skies, preferably a day with sky that has clouds. The clouds help. It also helps us to film. So here we go, guys. 100% throttle there and she's alive Ooh, just barely made it takes a little bit to get in the air there are three flight modes attached to the wing status very cool absolutely gorgeous plane keep your speed up and you'll be fine guys this plane is really fun to fly it is not hard to fly but it definitely has presence and it definitely is harder than you might think because you have to keep your speed up, okay? Twin 40s sound good for being a small EDF in my opinion. And on 2200 4S, it's not an expensive plane to battery, which is definitely a value in my opinion. Up she goes. Also, three trim flights need to be done. So plan on going through at least probably one to two batteries on your maidens because then what you can do is you can literally take your time, fly it, get the trims. Each of the three modes will carry different trim settings, okay? Amazing, so much fun. Here we go. Keeping the throttle, get your airspeed up, and then get that thing flying. We're gonna sweep to mid-wing. Just to show you, we're gonna go into a sweeping turn as we change the wings again. A little bit extra throttle just to keep it in the air at the right attitude and the right airspeed. Okay, sweeping back out. As you can see, it does great. We'll do a high speed pass. Full landing, excuse me, we're gonna sweep the wings and full speed pass. Here we go. So cool guys, very easy to control. And it looks amazing with the wings swept. But I gotta say, I'm a sucker for wings out. I don't do a lot of middle sweep on this F14, just because I think it's so much more agile. With the wings out, it's so cool looking, and it definitely has the power and authority. Let's try doing some upside down flight. Almost run out of elevator, just to give you full disclosure there. You can almost not fly it upside down the way I've got my battery configured. I'd like to get the battery back further. You good? Mm -hmm. We're gonna go inside this time. Okay. Remember, no rudders. And that means you need to be Johnny on the spot with your yaw authority because you don't have any except for your steerable nose gear. Obviously on landings, you're gonna have to remember to bring it in where you want it from the right trajectory, which means you need to be smart about when you fly so that you don't have situations where you can't get that thing yawed in. There's our timer. Waiting for the gal to stop talking. Camera crew's gonna go about five steps toward the house so we can do a landing here. We're gonna bring it in. I'm gonna actually go out over the tree line, see if I can bleed off a little bit more inertia. Good visibility right now because those little, little bits of cloud make a big difference, okay? Getting into my nose up attitude. Bringing it around, it's very difficult to see your, your situational awareness on this plane. It's tough if you don't have good lighting. Okay, so just the wind is, we're flying into the wind. You see how long it carries? It carries forever. 
but I'm probably 40% in on my elevator, okay? So I don't want to land it that way. We're going to actually land on the road. Did we land on the driveway before? I thought we did. I thought we did too. The wind is actually at our face, so I think we can do this. I'm keeping the wingtip up so I can see where it is spatially. It disappears with that backdrop. But you see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of getting a feel for how it's going to glide in. Because with those landing gears, if you want wheels up, wheels down, you got to really fly this thing. This is where having a big, long driveway would be nice, or excuse me, a big, long runway. So I'm going to get the nose down, try to get this thing down to planet Earth, just letting it glide in. Oh yeah, we're good. We got it. There it is, guys. And slowed it down nicely. Did some grass hops accidentally, admittedly, but remember, you don't have any rudder, so you don't have yaw authority there. Also, there's no differential thrust, so don't think that's going to get you out of hot water. What I did there was actually okay, and you saw I could flare it, and it really did slow it down nicely, almost like flaps. Just keep in mind, if you're carrying too much airspeed when you flare, you're just going to go up, and you're going to smack down, because you better get into the throttle if you find out you did it wrong. Okay, cool. So we're going to reset, and we're going to come right back. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so I pick it up out of the grass. This time, we didn't actually break free the wings. There is a wing saver in here, and I could whack this wing, and it would go out of the way, and it would basically remain swept back, and it would just flop. There's, a, there's two different little captures that are like this, and they hang on to a ball joint on the inside of the wing that's attached about here. The way you get to that, if you have a problem, is you pull this up, magnetically attached. There's a couple of screws, and then a couple of screws, and then this whole plate comes off. And you can redo it. But it's like a 10, 15 minute reset. It's not hard, it just takes a little bit of time. And so I don't wanna demonstrate that again because I already demonstrated it in our Unbox Build Radio mm -hmm. setup and Maidens or whatever. So also the other thing is if you're just getting this, you'll notice I scratched up my canopy. That was on one flip. That was one of the times where I knocked this back, okay? And that's a little bit of a bummer. I also had to touch up a lot here and a lot here after our first flights. But I just had some gray mixed up that believe it or not, I've had mixed for years and it's been a pretty good little match. It's a latex paint, really easy to get on there, no problem, and it's actually not a terrible match. It's not perfect, but that's one thing that's been a little bit disappointing on the F-14, is just the fact that the paint is thin, okay? Also, this is EPS, it's not EPO. Well, this is EPO, but I think the wings might be EPS. Either way, it's, it's got a little bit of resilience, it's not gonna take a lot of damage like your bigger planes will, okay? I'm gonna unplug that because it's annoying to listen to. But also you do have full telemetry on this thing. So you're gonna be able to tell what your pack voltages and all that stuff are. And that's really good. And I did Velcro on these batteries, okay? That's unusual for us. We don't generally do that. But what I'm gonna do is I believe I've got the other battery over here, I do. We're gonna reset this together and I'll show you exactly how to go from wheels up, wheels down to just doing hand launch. So camera crew is gonna stay over there so we can stay with the plane in the sun. We got some big shadows today. And I love this plane. It looks really good on the shelf. It looks really good in the air. And even though the bogies are fixed, it's not a bad look. I think the landing gear look nice. I just don't like flying a jet with landing gear. Okay, landing gear down, okay? There's also a limited space you can put this battery. So you see there's a plastic thing you can run into. So what, what I wanted to do, what I felt was a little bit off on that last flight is I would have liked to have the battery back just a hair more so I had a little bit more elevator authority, okay? So I'm gonna do that. Now, hopefully that doesn't make it fly bad. I don't think it will, but I had my battery just about a quarter inch further forward. And it's amazing. That's a lot of weight in proportion to the weight of this overall aircraft. So you have to remember that. Okay, shoot, I forgot to touch up on top of this when I flipped it, I scraped those too. Oh. But there is a CG point on this and I'm gonna pull the landing gear out right now. And I don't think we marked it on this one because it was like right there. Mm -hmm. So you can see these come out really easy. The camera crew is going to do our best to kind of hang on to this. And you notice that it popped out that front one. I've noticed that that pops out on landing. So if you do a touch and go and it's rough, just be aware, you may have actually popped out the front, okay? And then this is, of course, this is steerable, okay? So if you want to try to make a rudder that's made out of clear plastic, you can do that. And that will give you a little bit of rudder authority when you're bringing in your landings. But this is one of those things where you really have to be careful to protect from yanking out this entire plastic piece, okay? So when I put the canopy on to help the camera crew with their hands are full. Okay. And there's also a different launching technique to this, and so I wanna make sure we go over that and try to help you guys get the best out of your airplane because who wants to have a broken F-14? I'm gonna go ahead and 
sweep my wings real quick. I'm gonna lay this down on my leg so I can secure the plane. I'm gonna put my thumb on that plastic. See, I've got my thumb covering the plastic. And then I'm gonna see if the camera crew can help me on this. It'd be a lot easier if we had two sets of hands. Of course, we're filming. Can you pull straight up? Pull straight up. It should go. You'll be fine. Is it going? No. Okay. I'm gonna try rocking it toward me and that spring will collapse a little bit. See how it's rocking out? Mm -hmm. Now it's sticking out. Now try the same. Perfect. There you go, a little bit of wiggles, okay. There it goes. So what I did there, I wanted to show you guys how hard that can be on the first few times. So you have to kind of get that to squeeze over a little bit sometimes. You can see it's a nice strong music wire bogey with an ultrasonic weld or a weld of some sort that holds the left and the right J to take the nose gear. So the nose gear look really nice. I'm gonna plop these in my pocket real quick. And I mean, just taking the landing gear off makes this thing look a lot cooler, I think. But I'm also a huge sucker for the F-14. It's probably one of my favorite planes of all time. I grew up watching Top Gun, loved it, still love it. Could sit down and watch it right now. In fact, let's watch it this afternoon. We probably will. <laughs> and so as you can see, everything just looks so sleek and so gorgeous. And there's really nothing left to the imagination on this plane, except for flaps and, you know, things like rudders. And LEDs. And LEDs. But, but that's otherwise. Okay. There's, it'd be a complicated LED. It would map. be. And yeah. by the way, on the F-14, the LEDs are real narrow, and then they're out here, and they're they're also out here, and then there's also an anti-crash up here and a white up here, which would be sweet, and if that was on this UMX of the V2, oh my goodness, that'd be awesome. So when you launch this, it's kind of a tricky thing, so you have to figure out where you're comfortable holding it, and so in my case, I'm thinking, I kind of like the idea of trying to launch it like this, but it's just, it's kind of a hard thing to hold on to, so if you hold it wide like that, when you're throwing it, the AS3X actually has a proprietary technology that helps it know to go ahead and overwhelm and go a little extra throttle for a second on a hand launch. It knows by listening to the gyroscopic response on the AS3X, okay? I know it sounds like a bunch of BS, but it's true, okay? Now, the other thing is I don't wanna do a swing throw because you might actually break free that linkage, okay? Now, that doesn't mean you're gonna lose your plane or crash it necessarily, but you probably will. If you get it so it's broke free, you should be able to fly this plane with the wing swept, but get your flight mode in the wing swept so both of them go back. Bring it in, land it in the taller grass, flare it at the last second as much as you can. You can be carrying a lot of speed to do that. Okay, you also notice that I rode my battery back just a hair further, so I have a little bit more ele elevator authority, and I wanna make sure that I'm paying attention to where the wind is. That's what these wind socks are for. And yes, we have three huge, giant wind socks on our property. Camera crew, would you mind holding that for just a sec? Mm-hmm. Maybe not by the nose, maybe underneath. There you go, under one of the nacelles, okay. there you go. Okay, so I'm gonna get myself all set. I'm gonna clear my timer, and then I'm gonna walk over, try to get into the shade so you guys can see this. I'm gonna walk right over to this, okay? 16.5 volts, okay? So we have telemetry to tell us when our battery is low, and because we're doing a little bit different takeoff and landing approach, I'm gonna be able to take off and land here. I'm gonna be able to take, it, take off and land there, or here, or here, or here. And always think about those things when you're doing a launch on a hand launch of a small and relatively delicate plane, okay? I don't wanna lose this F-14, I love it too much, okay? All right, guys, here we go. So, a couple of different ways you can hold it. I think you could get away with holding it this way. I think what they're suggesting is an overhand toss like this, where you just kinda of get your hands in here and just kinda of throw it like that. But I just, I'm not sure what the easiest way. It's just kind of a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a pretty decent sized grip. Yeah, I'm that's wide. I'm struggling. So you're going to go full throttle. Don't dink around. Give it full throttle. Give it a strong toss, okay? I'm going to go into safe. Safe mode. Verify it's in safe. Make sure your ailerons are looking for level. And then launch that son of a gun. All right, here we go. I so badly want to hold it like this and just launch it like that. But I don't know if that's the right way. I'm gonna try the overhand first because that's kind of what we've been told to try. Okay, here we go. <laughs> that was super easy, guys. <laughs> okay, out of safe, and here we go. Getting the throttle back, give my battery a break. Gosh, it looks faster now. Going on the inside. Oh, <laughs> so sweet looking, guys. Oh, yeah! Okay, I want to try upside down flight performance up against those clouds, guys. 
Yep, it's better now. I've got the battery in a better spot. Obviously zero rudder authority now. Oh, that is so sweet. Out of the throttle. Listening. Sounds like an air raid siren trying to start. <laughs> oh, that is so spectacular. It's such a fun looking plane. But I gotta say, some of you have reasonable complaints that it's expensive, delicate, and not super easy to fly. Welcome to the realm of EDF jets. Sorry to break it to you, that's kind of the way they are. They're always harder to fly than prop planes, but when you get into the most scale and most complex, like the F-14, expect a little bit of unexpected. And I gotta say, this thing flies really nice. It's on rails. Okay, let's sweep the wings. Okay, we're gonna go up by the clouds. Sorry, camera crew. And then wings fully swept out of the throttle. <laughs> so sweet and we have really good elevator authority too unexpectedly oh man that is so fast and amazing looking okay i'm in the landing mode because there is no actual nomenclature that really makes sense in the audio events for wing swept one minute left here we go guys just gonna enjoy it while it lasts don't forget if you're up against a dark surface like that, this plane does disappear. It's gray. It's painted like a disappear gray. That's the color it would be in real life because they want them to disappear. They don't want to get shot down. They want it to be hard to see. Very good. Very good elevator authority now. Not much on the downside. <laughs> Oh man, this time flies when you're having fun though, I'll tell you on this thing. All right guys, I'm gonna try to land it the same direction like toward the entrance. Bring it over into the bowl. Okay, we got our countdown going right now. Okay, out of the throttle. Bringing it in at a slight angle so we can use up more real estate. Oh yeah. That looks so sweet. There we go. Stole it, and then down she goes. Oof. Canopy popped off, throttle cuts on, and we got about 33% power left. Now, the reason we want 33% power left is because if you need to get out of Dodge and you are getting ready to bail on a landing, you are full throttle right now or you will lose it because you need a lot of power to get that thing moving. And these EDF jets are all the same in that regard. Okay, we're gonna be really careful. In fact, you can stay here. I'll just go out there and grab it. It's okay. You see out here, guys. Sorry, we've had snow. Okay, so we talked about this. Throttle cuts on. I have the intent, or I have the canopy. Canopy pop. Not a big deal. I'm gonna slide that back on. And full disclosure, time for some truth bomb. Look. Yep. Now, it's not broken, guys. It's just not in the right position because guess what? She's loose. I gotta say, for being an amazing aircraft, and I do love that we have that feature so we can protect this amazing aircraft, I'd like to not have to do a repair every time we belly land, okay? Now, that was not a pristine, perfect belly landing. I will admit that right now, but it also wasn't terrible either, okay? I'm not sure, maybe because the ground is somewhat frozen in certain spots and then really muddy in other, pot, other spots, we have kind of limitations on where we can put down. But when it's all tall grass and it's soft and it's supple, like during spring and summer, I think you'll have a better chance at it. And also we have tall grass where we take hay in this front part of our yard. But it's definitely gonna be something you wanna keep in mind. The wing sweep mechanism is not without some effort to keep running. Also, get yourself a nice gray paint so you can touch up your paint because if you scuff this, it's going to show through because that white really looks bad when you've got gray. I touched up mine, I had like seven or eight little spots where I had nicked the paint, particularly here and here when I had to take off this machine piece here. It snapped here and it's screwed in four places, two up here and then two under this thing, which is magnetically attached right here. You have to get in there, one, two, and then three, 
and four. And then that top piece comes straight up and slips forward. So it's a bit of a task. I'm not really too worried about it. I'm gonna go do it off camera because we've already shared that process with you a number of times. I think we did it twice on our unboxing. I think field. we did. But either way, well earned crashes. I gotta say, they call this an experience level three and they mean it. This plane is definitely going to disappoint a lot of people that get it and don't know how to fly. And I feel like I know how to fly and I'm still bummed that I have to go in and fix this. Not a big deal, but it is annoying, okay? So keep that in mind if you're gonna go ahead and purchase this. I think this plane will have a shorter than average shelf life if you're not a good enough pilot. So maybe if you get it and you're thinking, I need my skills refined before I fly it, but I wanna make sure I get my hands on one. Very good thinking, by the way. Get one, I don't often recommend this. Get one, have it, improve your flight skills. Maybe take it out on a really calm day where you've got a huge open environment but I recommend doing wheels up, wheels down. It's a little bit harder, but you're less likely to actually pop the, pop the wings out. So just my two cents, I still absolutely love this plane and I don't want you guys to hear my thoughts wrong. I thought the hand launch was way easier than it was gonna be. Yeah. And it, it definitely seems, was. Yeah. So that's really cool. And the other thing is, if you have a bit of wind and it's nice laminar wind and it's going down your runway and not crosswind like this, I think you're gonna have the best crack at success with this plane because you can really reduce your overall ground speed, even though your airspeed is the same because airspeed is airspeed, always airspeed, but ground speed relative to your airspeed makes ground speed. So if you're going 25 miles an hour with this and the, and, the, and the wind is moving 15 miles an hour, you're only going 10. It's very slow, you could almost catch it. So, which I, I'm not recommending you do, by the way. I don't think this thing, you'd for sure knock the wing out. But what a sweet and technology packed cool thing to have does it need some refinements i think it would be better in a bigger plane made by e-flight that can be amazing possibly on twin 3s like a 50 and a 50 that have their own 3s or maybe a 6s and one per so you don't blow through batteries like crazy on a twin 70. i just can't wait to see this thing done by e-flight because it's gonna be refined and easy to fly and beautiful and gorgeous and I can't wait. And this thing is amazing. And by the way, think of all the cool things you could do with a twin EDF configuration in 40 millimeters. Can you say airliner? Can you say can. all sorts of amazing well, yeah. planes that we love? For I mean, sure. there's so many cool planes we can do. That being said, most of the small planes in this size class, they cheat with one EDF instead of two, but having true twin that doesn't destroy packs is a win on my point. And here's the thing, we gotta have a few of these on the way to full adoption of these systems, okay? So I'm gonna say whatever short fallings this F-14 has, and I'm not saying there aren't, I think they're acceptable. They're marginal and they've been well engineered. The wings are good, the trims are good. You can do all the things you need to do. I'm a little bit disappointed we didn't have spoilers and flaps but how are you gonna do that on an EDF of this size? You're just not. LEDs would be amazing, but then how do you do that with the wing sweep? Right. So it's like, I understand on some of the sacrifices there, obviously just too dang small for retracts. If you added the weight of retracts, this thing would be a dog and it's already on the edge, okay? So this thing on 4S, 2200, 30C pack, nothing outrageous. Just a regular smart Gen 2 pack is what I recommend. You don't want that balance lead. You definitely don't want a voltage alarm in there. You want to use the telemetry for your voltage alarms. And you do not want to hit low voltage cutoff with this plane. LVC could lose your plane for you. If it's doing pulsing, you're not going to have enough power to make a landing necessarily. Especially if your battery ends up just a little bit too far forward because you're not going to have enough flare authority. So, a lot of things to consider on this F-14. It's absolutely amazing. I am honored to be flying it for you here on YouTube. This thing is amazing. I can't wait to see what's next from E-Flight. Thanks, E-Flight. Good job. Thank you for taking on a hard project because everybody else does the easy stuff. Do the hard stuff, do it right, and make us keep loving your stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. Buy this thing from the link in the video description below if you think you wanna take it on. If you don't, F-16 is an amazing choice. You're gonna have an even better time with it. I know, I know E-Flight's saying, why would you say that? I'm saying because I think you will. Also, the F-15, if you want something to get your feet wet with, 
very easy to fly plane takes a long time to roll but easy flying safe works with the thing it's very good for a beginner on edx viper 90 amazing flight experience okay viper 70 amazing flight experience retracks aren't quite as good 90 takes you off road 70 got to be on pavement there's so many good flight flight experiences you can have and we've done a lot of them here on this channel we haven't done as many as i'd like but we'll get there someday all right guys and the other thing is nx8 was perfect with this plane absolutely nothing to be left to be desired on the nx8 nx10 would be nice but it's not going to be nice on this plane because we pretty much used up the channels we can use and definitely as3x and safe worked flawlessly on this had no problems hand launch was amazing i was scared to death worked fine also we didn't lose our ventral fins there was absolutely no damage on the ventral fins which is amazing a little bit of schmutz on there but that's to be expected it's a little bit schmutzy out there because yep. it's been snowy and now uh, we've got the sun baking the ground so perfect guys check it out smash the like button subscribe click the bell for notifications if you haven't already done that and come back for more we got brian phillips rc out there if you're trying to sort through our plethora of thousands of videos and also if you want to help us out financially but you don't want this plane or another plane or you're in europe or you're in australia or new zealand or something like that which we have a lot of you guys out there watching us supporting us check out patreon and paypal that's an easy way to support us you don't have to send us lots of money it's just you know if you want something there to pat us on the back it's there for you but we would still prefer you buy planes and we understand it's not always practical if you're over in you know these other countries where you can't get shipping over there we get it we know you guys are with us so Stay tuned. So much more from Brian Phillips RC coming.